أنهم في الأرض كما استخلف الذين من قبلهم ولا يمكنن لهم دينهم الذي ارتضى لهم ولا يبدلن من بعد خوفهم أمنا يعبدونني ولا يشركوا بي شيئا ومن كفر بعد ذلك فأولئك هم الفاسقون وقال عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفكه قولي اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورضنا الطباء وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورضنا اجتنابا Today I'm going to share with you a verse of the Quran that shows how distant we have become from understanding the true nature of Islam. You will see what I'm talking about, but this verse sheds light how our perceptions of Islam itself, the perceptions of Muslims about what Islam is, has changed over time. This verse also, in addition to bringing back to our mind the correct, comprehensive view of what Islam should be, in addition to this, it also, this verse, has by the nature of its promise, because this verse has a great promise in it, which I will discuss. By the nature of the promise in this verse, as well as, therefore, as a result of not fulfilling the promise, the result, which is also mentioned in the verse, that itself coming true is a, a sign or a miracle or a, some, a symbol, symbolic gesture from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Muslims. This verse, is, this verse used to be in history, in Islamic history, one of the most taught, one of the most repeated verses of the Quran. You know how we teach our children Ayatul Kursi or Fatiha? It was, as, as you grew older, you heard this more often than you do today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْضَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Allah has promised those of you who truly believe when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Amanu minkum, this minkum means amongst you that are truly believers. Waltakum minkum ummatun yaduna ilal. Minkum is referring to the true believers amongst the believers. So it is a bigger emphasis than Ya Yuhilladina Amanu itself. Because Ya Yuhilladina Amanu itself says, Ya Yuhilladina Amanu Aminu billahi wa rasuli. But anyway, Wa'adallahu alladina amanu minkum. Those of you, Allah promises those of you who truly are faithful, وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And they do good deeds. Now this good deeds, this concept of good deeds is not the same concept of, like sometimes people say, oh well, I'm a good person. I don't think when I go to the hereafter. This is not being good. This being good that, you know, we think we're good to other people is just a biological phenomenon. It's part of all, even animals are good to each other if they're the same species. This, when it says good deeds, it doesn't mean good deeds uh, by being nice to other people. This is not what the verse means, or this terminology in Quran does not mean being nice to people. It means those people who have actively worked, عَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ They have actively, actively worked to make things right. This is what it means. Those who had belief, and then in addition to their belief, their belief, their conviction, their belief and their conviction became so much that they had to act and make things right. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ If you are true believers, and you really work to make things right, there's, if there is no Islam in the world, then there's disharmony. And this disharmony, you know, a lot of times we become confused that the upper class always feels, the upper middle class, the upper class always feels harmony. The upper class is always enjoying itself. The upper class never sees a problem with the society that they're living in. It's, you have to, to, in order to see the disharmony within any society, you have to see what's happening with the people that are of the lower class. The lower, lower class. The percentage of near poverty in any society. The percentage of people that are homeless in any society. That's where the disharmony is. This is why you see that amongst the first people that responded to the call of the Prophet ﷺ when he, what he was teaching became somewhat known, well known, you will see that one of the, the, the first groups to accept Islam were the people that were the outcasts of society, the, the, the downtrodden of society. Even in the 1960s, when two million African Americans accepted Islam, they did two million African Americans did not accept Islam out of some philosophical quest. I've said this before. Two million African Americans accepted Islam in America because of the sense of justice that Islam provided them as a theoretical framework that all human beings are equal. That they didn't have to worship some white god. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Allah promises those of you who really believe and make works of righteousness, make things right, bring back harmony within society. The opposite of salaha yaslahu is fasada yafsidu. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِلُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْلِمُونَ so those people who did the opposite of the work of fasad. So وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ If you knew Arabic, you would appreciate the lam taqid and the nun taqid at the end of this. لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ We will definitely, definitely, definitely grant them khilafah on earth. What does it mean? We will give them self-determination. We will give them independence. We will give them the ability to control their own affairs. They will have their own political determination. They will be able to create a society based upon Quranic and Islamic legislation, based upon the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Clearly, we do not find that to be true today. I will come back to this. وَعَضَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ لِلَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ Just as Allah says, look at history. Run through the pages of history. You will find whenever my people believed in me, whether it was the time of Suleiman and Da'ud and Suleiman, or any other time, whenever people believed in me and they really held on to the truth, I gave them independence and control over their affairs. Look at history. And when did we lose control over our own affairs as Muslims? We lost control over our own affairs and our own self-determination when we left Islam. Khilafa. وَعَضَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ I will give them khilafah on earth. Now I said in the beginning of the khutbah, I will share with you how our concepts have become perverted over time. Or you can say, not focused correctly. Khilafah is a 
political slash economic social system in which people li live the way that they want to live, meaning by Islam, they live by Islam. But in this land, for example, there are no Yemenis, there's no Saudis, there's no Pakistanis, there's no Afghanis. I mean, not that, not that Allah doesn't want us to have identities. I'm not saying this, this has to be clear. Allah gave us identities. Allah made us have different identities. I'm from one tribe, you're from another tribe. That identity Allah wants to maintain, even to the fact, even to the point. When Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, you know he had 12 tribes. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam had 12 tribes. So Allah said to Musa, That there will be a wealth for every tribe. E resources divided equally. So there's no disharmony. This should happen. Then, you know, then starting with Musa, then Isa, alayhi salatu wasalam, he also had 12 hawariyin, 12 disciples. Why? Because each of the disciples, each of the Hawari, each of the disciples was representative for his tribe. So there's nothing wrong in Islam with having an identity that I'm from such and such place, and such and such place, and my father is such and such person. There's nothing wrong with that. But there is something wrong with the borders that Muslims have created amongst themselves, both intellectually, emotionally, and physically. You know the famous writings of Ibn Battuta, for example. He was a great traveler of Islam. He didn't, he traveled from one place to another place. I mean, in the modern times, we can have passports or whatever. That's a mechanism. I'm not going into the, the logistics. But the point is, is that the idea that all Muslim lands are one, essentially, this holds true even today, and is a very big part of Islam. Just as the Prophet ﷺ combined all the Arab tribes into one entity. Those very tribes that were fighting against each other, Allah mentions this in the Qur'an. وَاعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Remember, Allah says the time before Prophet Muhammad, where you were all enemies of one another. And we brought your hearts together. The same goes with the Muslim lands. The Muslim lands, they should be conceptually in the minds of the Muslims. They should be as one. The Prophet said, about the Ummah, he said about the Ummah, his people. They're like one body. If one part of the body aches, the whole body aches. So we Muslims, not only theoretically and emotionally, we feel attachment to every Muslim everywhere in the world, but this needs to not become, not beyond being an emotional reality, it needs to one day, inshallah, become a political reality economic reality, just like NATO, for example. The currency is one. The, it's, many countries have come together as one. Many countries or many people can come together as one. But Islam would go beyond that even. Not just currency, not just army, but even more than that, beyond that. Become one political entity. So Allah says, and Islam has its own view of what a political system should look like. What an economic system should look like. Islam has its own view of what a uh, judiciary should look like. How laws should be maintained and how legislation should be done. How people should be elected, so on and so forth. Islam has its own view on these things. Quran is not just a book that needs to be read and then put on the shelf. But these are re ideas Qur'an shares that need to become reality. And Allah says, وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Allah promises, this is Allah's promise. In another place, I will share what Allah feels about His promise. Allah, in the verse, 
إن الله أشترى من المؤمنين أنفسهم وأموالهم بأن لهم الجنة. And then Allah says, وعد عليه حقا. This is Allah's promise. Allah says this. وعد الله وعد عليه حقا في التوراة والإنجيل والقرآن ومن أوفى بأحده من الله. Who can be more true of delivering a promise than Allah? Allah promises you, and this promise is based upon the commandment to do so, which I'm not going to go into today. Allah promises those of you who really have Iman and really do the right deeds, work proactively in the right direction. Allah will give you khilafah on earth. And Allah will make firm for you the deen, the Islam that Allah has preferred for you. And Allah will make sure it, Islam is entrenched in that society. And what was your state before this? وَلَا يُبَدِّلَنَّ بَعْدَ خَوْفِهِمْ أَمْنًا And we will change your state of fear into peace and tranquility. When you have that self-determination, you will no longer feel as if you are in a siege. When you have that self-determination, you will no longer feel as if you are in a state of fear. And this has been a reality that we can see today because we don't have the Khilafah today. And as we get farther and farther away from the Khilafah, which is almost more than 100 years now, our state of fear is increasing even in North America. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْضَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ وَلَا يُمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمُ الَّذِينَهُمُ الَّذِي ارْتَضَى لَهُمْ وَلَا يُبَدِّلَنَّ مِنْ بَعْدِ خَوْفِهِمْ أَمْنَا Then, only then, when you have established Allah's laws on earth, understand this, dear brothers and sisters, when you have established the laws of Allah on earth, and then you give the adhan and say, Allahu Akbar, that is its true meaning. This is why Iqbal said, Mullah ki adha or mujahid ki adha or. Someone's just saying Allah Akbar ritualistically. Doesn't have any meaning. But somebody who understands the meaning of Allahu Akbar, Allah's laws, and then Allah says, Ya'budunani wa la yushriku bi shay'a. Then, only then, will you be in true state of worship of me when this happens and there will be no shirk with me because the third form of shirk is you can make Allah equip make something equal to Allah in like the person of Allah you take some idol and say he's God there's one shirk, level of shirk second level of shirk is in attributes Allah is a razik he's the one who provides but you start thinking someone else is your provider the third is Allah says, do this, and you say, no, I'm going to do this. This is shirk. This is a level of shirk. This is a form of shirk. To make someone else's law equal or above Allah's law, this is a form of shirk. This is the type of shirk for which the Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that to, to, to see shirk is harder than seeing a black ant on a dark night on a dark night in the depths of the ocean on a black rock, as hard as it is to see that black ant, it is that hard to see shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there are three levels of shirk. Making something equal to Allah, this is understood. Making somebody's attributes equal to Allah, Allah is the one who gives life and death, not someone else. And then third is in his commandments. What he said do, and what he said don't do. He is the king. He has the kursi. 
This is what that ayah means. This is why this is the most important ayah of the Quran. Because it mentions the authority of Allah. His kursi, his throne, his yani, power, his, his dominion is over the heavens and the earth. The arsh is for alim al-amr. The kursi is over alim al-khalq. This is why it says, was your kursi samawati wal ard because ard samawati wal ard is tahlik of Allah. Ala lillahi al-khalq wal amr. The khalq is by the amr of Allah. I can't go into details right now because I don't have time. The khalq is by the amr of Allah. Allah said be, but khalq is a separate creation from the amr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is kun fayakun be, and it is. I can't go into details of this right now. But these are the two worlds that Allah has created. Alim al-khalq and alim al-amr. And one day, inshallah, I will talk about this. So, we find ourselves today, when we look at this verse of the Qur'an, وَعَضَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Allah has promised, Allah has promised, those of you who truly believe, and really do the right things, لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ I will give you authority on earth. If you deserve it, I'll give it to you. See, there's a divine law with the Muslims. It's not how educated we are, it's not how resourceful we are, it's not how much finances we have, it's not how much, uh, how much media control we have, it's not that. There is a divine law with Muslims that is, if you are true to Islam, you will rise. And the divine law is, if you're not true to Islam, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to be in trouble in this life and the next life if you're not true to Islam. And if you're true to Islam, you will be good in this life and you will be good in the next world. And so, let me read this verse of the Quran and explain a hadith that explains this verse. وَعَضَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ let me actually do my uh, do this in the second khutbah. ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وعد الله الذين آمنوا منكم وعملوا الصالحات الله has promised those of you who really believe and do what needs to be done who do the right things that Allah will give you authority on earth. He'll give you power on earth. He'll give you self-determination. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make that deen, that deen, the one that you prefer, the one that you love and that Allah loves. Allah will make it everywhere. Because if you're a Muslim, you want to live by Islam. And Allah will establish that Islam for you at all levels of life. in the court system, in the political system, in how you choose your leaders, in the social system. And then Allah says, I will take away your fear, your state of fear that you find yourselves in. I will take that away and put you in a state of tranquility. So this is the ayah, and there is a companion of the Prophet ﷺ who says, who talks about this verse of the Qur'an when it was revealed, and what the companions of the Prophet were going through when this was being revealed and what, what his thoughts were on this particular verse of the Qur'an. This is taken directly from the tafsir of Ibn Kathir. Anyone can go up and dig it out for themselves. I'm just going to give the gist. He says that the Prophet ﷺ in the beginning when he was in Mecca, he was calling towards Islam at that time, we used to be in a state of fear. And then he says, after describing the situation in Mecca, he says when we came to Medina, we were still in a state of fear.
And then he says, then after Medina, after the conquest of Mecca, he says that after that, Allah gave us the Khilafah and made the Prophet ﷺ its leader. And our fear changed into tranquility and peace. Because in Mecca, in the beginning, if you said even La ilaha illallah, you're a target of society. And if you're in Medina, then the people in Medina, people who were outside Medina were not happy with the Muslims having any success, and they wanted to stop that. But soon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is important, وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفْ إِسْتَخْلَفَ means to soon give khilaf. Not there and then, but there will come. If you do this, it will come. But you have to work hard. So the companions of the Prophet worked hard in Mecca. They worked hard in Medina. And then the companion of the Prophet ﷺ said, then we were given Khilafah as Muhammad ﷺ as our leader. And he, and he loved us and we loved him. And then he says, after the Prophet ﷺ passed away, the Khilafah was given to Abu Bakr and we loved him and he loved us. And then it continues from there. The point is that it was a reality then Maybe when the companions of the Prophet were in Medina, now imagine yourself, or you're in Mecca. This ayah is, this surah is Madni, so it was in Mecca, Medina that they read this. When the companions of the Prophet read this ayah, Allah promises those of you who believe and do good deeds, Allah will give you authority on earth and so on and so forth. Maybe in someone's heart, sometimes it came. But then he hoga, and he hoga, maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't happen. Allah says we'll have authority on earth. But within 10 years, Muslims had authority on earth. And as Muslims moved away from Islam, the authority was taken away and then came, I don't want to go into the whole history, but Muslims have had Khilafah for more than, some form of Khilafah, you can say a imperialist Khilafah. Islamic laws were applied at the personal law criminal law at that level, but at the political level, there were changes. But there was a slow decline, you know, coming with the Umayyad first, then the Abbasids, and then the, then after that, the Tadars, the Suljaks, and then the Ottoman, and then the Mughal Empire. So these empires were going. But slowly, there was a downfall over the centuries. And finally, the Khilafah in 1924 was completely dismantled. March 13th. And since that time till today, we have been getting farther and farther away from Islam in many ways. And so, what will happen as a result? Our state of fear will increase unless we start working for the re establishment for Islam. So this, is a re this is divine law. This is going to happen. And it really hurts me pains me when I think about my kids because I know I can see, I see it, that it's going to be very hard for my kids to be true Muslims in where the society is going. With the fuhush, the indecency, the, the throwing off the clothes, the, all the different ideas, we're in a marketplace of ideas, so many ideas to choose from. It's so easy to make a wrong mistake for a teenager today than it was ever before. So, so easy. I mean, so blessed are parents whose children stay strong on Islam the whole time. Parents should really, those parents that have children that are on Islam, because majority of them are, are the, I mean, are, when you were in Pakistan or when you were in the Arab world, you were taught Islam a little bit by society, by TV, by, by your parents, by the scholars, by the imam. You were learning about Islam, something. But now it's just a few hours a week and it's not really cultured in society. You don't see it in practice and it's going to be tough for those of us that are here. It's going to be very tough. Because like I said, it just takes one bad decision, one bad decision. 
and your life goes on a roller coaster and it's a long way back. You know, when you go on that roller coaster on the wrong side, it, you usually can come back. It happens a lot of times, but it's a long way. And parents sometimes have to wait a long time. Anyway, let's pray. Uh, we have two nikahs today. Not one nikah, two nikahs. So, I don't want to end in just a bitter note. Yes, we have. I just want people to understand that Islam is not just our individual lives. That we are connected. We're connected by divine law. And that we have a mission before us that we have to work towards, whether we're doing it actively or at least willing to accept it in our hearts. Yes, we have to work towards the establishment of an Islamic way of life. So let's finish with dua and then we'll pray and then we will have the announcements and then after that the nikah, uh, inshallah. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa kina adhab al-nawr. ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين اللهم تجعل القرآن ربي قلوبنا ونور صدورنا اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا يا الحي يا القيوم برحمتك نستغيث اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إن تحميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد آمين اللهم آمين إن الله يعملكم بالأذل والإحسان وإتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبخي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم فاستجب لكم فأقيموا الصلاة Please move forward إن شاء الله